On the roof frame of driftwood, Einar lays branches, then thick slabs of turf, stitching the hill back over his hall. From the outside, it looks like the slope simply grew a seam of grass. From the inside, it feels like someone pulled a blanket over the sky. Snow will pile on top in winter, adding another layer of insulation. What would crush a wooden roof becomes armor for a turf one. When the work is done and the first fire burns, his family eats under that living ceiling, bowls steaming faces lit by flame. Outside wind claws at the mound. Inside the roar is little more than a distant murmur. He looks up at the curved roof frost clinging outside where it belongs and understands. He didn't just cover a house. He wrapped an entire hill around his children. Inside the half-buried hall, Einar sets the benches first, one along each wall, low and solid. By day, their seats. By night, beds as close to the fire as he can safely make them. His boots scrape across the packed earth as he steps to the hearth, a shallow stone-lined pit in the center, the heart of everything. He piles, driftwood strikes a spark, waits. Flame catches, slow then steady. Smoke curls upward, hangs for a breath, then slips through the small smoke hole above. Outside the valley, wind rips past, but in here, the smoke flows clean. No backdraft, no fight. Weeks of worry sit on his shoulders, heavier than any log. Then the smoke clears, smooth and true. For the first time in a long while, he smiles. If the hearth works, the home works. Einar moves through the dim hall like a man tuning a fire he hasn't lit yet. First, he hangs wool curtains from wooden pegs, breaking the long room into smaller pockets. Smaller spaces warm faster and stay warm longer. The fabric brushes his hand, thick, scratchy, carrying that faint lanolin smell every Norse child grows up with. Then he leads the animals into the side bay sheep, a calf, a couple of goats. Their breath rises in soft clouds. Their body heat will bleed through turf and timber, adding its own quiet layer to the house. Finally, he raises the sleeping platforms a few hands above the floor. Everyone knows the ground steals heat. A lifted bed is the line between shivering and real sleep. He steps back, imagining his children curled up here, cheeks flushed, breathing easy. For the first time, the hall feels less like a structure and more like a small, warm world. Night comes early in Iceland, the kind of early that makes the world feel smaller. But inside the turf house, Einar's family gathers tight around the hearth hands wrapped around warm wooden bowls, firelight shaking softly across their faces. Outside, the wind claws at the roof, screaming through the turf, like it's trying to tear the night open. Inside, the storm fades to a low, distant growl. His youngest leans against his arm, half asleep, while his wife tells an old saga hero's dark seas. Storms bigger than this one, the kind of story that works like an extra blanket. Einar listens, eyes drifting up to the curved turf roof roots, knitting above them like a living shell. He didn't just build a shelter, he turned a hill into a refuge, a warm island in a frozen world. Long before Einar ever set foot in Iceland, other cold weather peoples had already learned the same lesson he's learning now. The Inuit of the Arctic coast carving winter homes half sunk into the permafrost. The Scots in the Orkney winds stacking earth and stone into thick, breathing walls. Norse settlers in Greenland sheltering their halls beneath layers of turf, just like this one. Different worlds, same solution cold to warm contrast when the wind is sharp enough to cut through bone timber stops helping stone stops helping even fire has its limits out here no furnace no thermostat no double glazed window is coming to save you but earth layered heavy patient holds heat like nothing else narrator pause and across the north every culture that survived the dark months learned this truth in their own way in the cold, no matter where people come from, they turn to the ground beneath their feet as a silent friend, a quiet partner against the winter. Centuries pass. The turf houses that once dotted Iceland's valleys sink back into the earth, 
Roofs, collapsing walls, softening the land, quietly reclaiming what was borrowed. Modern homes rise, timber frames, insulation concrete, but the old ideas never really vanish. Earth sheltered walls, green roofs, passive heating, all echoes of a wisdom men like Einar learned by necessity. Today, we call it green design. For him, it was just staying alive. Sensory cut. And if you imagine him standing there just for a moment in front of that turf house he carved into the hillside, you can almost see the way he'd look at it now. Snow piled on the roof like a white cloak, smoke drifting soft from the hearth, a small warm island inside an ocean of winter, masculine tenderness. He never knew he was leaving a legacy. He only wanted his family to live, but the ground he shaped, shaped the generations after him that is the quiet, stubborn gift of the turf house. In the end, Einar never conquered the winter. He didn't break it. He didn't bend it. He simply learned how to listen to it the way a man listens to the wind before it turns or to the earth before it freezes. Breath pause. From soil, from wind, from snow. He carved out the one thing every human still searches for today. Warmth in a world that can feel unbearably cold cold to warm contrast. And if you stood beside him now, outside that turf house, pressed deep into the hillside, you'd see what he learned better than any legend. That survival isn't loud. It isn't glory. It's the quiet courage of understanding the land beneath your feet. Masculine tenderness. A father shaping warmth out of a frozen world so his children could sleep in peace. Earthborn warmth.